Death is the source of all evils, they say. Avoid death. Death enslaves. And that's partly true, because drowning in debt is the end of living. Your debts aren't waiting for you to pay them. They're rising because no one lends free money. There's always interest. Despite this, the total U.S. consumer debt is about $15 trillion, with an average household debt of approximately $5,300. The U.S. GDP is slightly over $21 trillion, and that's the whole economy. The good news is that debt isn't always terrible. That's controversial because most of our debt is bad. With credit card debt, vehicle loans, and maybe student loans, you may be thinking, it will take years to pay off all of this. How can that be good? To see how this could be useful, let's look at how wealthy people still use it to earn more money. It's a bit puzzling because why would someone with a great deal of money use debts? Isn't it for those who don't have money? But capitalism doesn't function like that. Using debt as a powerful tool can help you create more money, and you'll see how rich people do it in this video. So give us a thumbs up and let's get started. Number 1. There is a lot of trade that relies on debt. Borrowing funds to begin a business is a bad idea, and I definitely would never do it. But for some companies, especially traditional ones, that is the best option. Let's imagine you want to start a pen business. It's an extremely popular item with a steady demand. Now you should go to China and look for a manufacturer that makes that type of pen at a reasonable price. Buy a container of pens, transport them to America, and give them to your customers. Unless it's a more complex product, you can do all of this online using platforms like Alibaba. However, there is a catch. You do not actually have to pay for the goods in order to obtain them first. Here's how. Chinese factories now produce virtually everything, a transformation that occurred in the last 50 years. There are tens of thousands of factories that work around the clock to generate all of society's needs. Most of these factories would gladly loan you their products in exchange for a future payment. To borrow from them, you must first gain their trust, and it's been this way for 50 years. The client pays the factory and borrows more products after the product is sold in the US or elsewhere. You're simply saying to the factory, you know how to make it, now let me help you sell it. Anything exceeding this amount will be my profit. The advantage of this technique is that you are not tying up your own funds. That's why selling is one of the most valuable talents you can learn. Number 2. Refinancing Real estate loans are ideal since they have the most loopholes. You pay higher taxes if you don't have a mortgage. Rich people always have several mortgages to maximize their tax benefits. Remember that every dollar you save in taxes is a dollar earned. That's how the rich grow richer. But here's a more practical approach. This is how the rich make money in the real estate market. Suppose you save $200,000. That's a huge sum, yet it's really crumbs. Even buying a house is out of the question. The 20% down payment rule prevents you from getting a mortgage up to $800,000. But here's the trick. Let's imagine you find a $500,000 property. It's in horrible shape and requires a little or a lot of work. You go to a bank and get a mortgage with a 20% down payment. Say you'll spend 10% of the entire value of the house on renovations, or $50,000. You're back in the bank, but this time it's for a mortgage refinance. Your first mortgage was for half a million dollars since the property was in such horrible shape that nobody wanted to live there. But now that you've renovated it, people want to rent it. As a result, the property's market value, let's say, jumps to $700,000. Now let's say you secure an 80% mortgage, but 80% of $700,000 equals $560,000. The first bank that loaned you the money 
will get 400,000 of that money. Subtract another $50,000 for renovations and you'll have an extra profit of $110,000. With that, you've made $110,000 and now you have a property that you can rent out to grow equity and earn passive income. Having a mortgage also exempts you from paying taxes. This is a typical real estate investor's technique. After seeing this, can you recognize why debt isn't so bad? I'll leave that up to you in the comment section below. Number 3. Hedge Funds Hedge funds are created by the wealthy to increase their wealth. They often choose unpopular tactics. Mortal individuals like me and you try to anticipate which firms will grow in value and spend our hard-earned money in hopes that these companies will grow. But hedge funds often take the opposite approach. They aim to profit when corporations fail, as in the case of GameStop. When it came to hedge funds, the internet contributed to almost $13 billion in losses. But where does this money come from? Take Facebook for example. You predict its stock to fall next week when Apple, the most popular smartphone manufacturer, announces that it will no longer allow apps like Facebook or Instagram to follow your online activities and that privacy will be prioritized. This will have a significant negative impact on the business model of Facebook. So, you pick up the phone and call your broker to borrow $100 worth of Facebook shares which you then sell on the open market for $100. Congrats! The money is yours, but you still owe one share of Facebook to your broker. Let's imagine you're right, and Facebook stock sinks to $70 next week. You use the $100 to buy a Facebook stock for $70, as the price decreased. Then, you give it back to your broker and keep the profit. Congrats! you made $30 from a stock's decline. It's easy in principle, but complicated and risky in execution. So what if you're wrong? What happens if the price doubles? That single share of Facebook stock must be returned to your broker, and you must pay interest on the shares you borrowed. To return the stock to your broker, you must now pay $200 to repurchase it. Normally, the most you can lose when selling a rising stock is the value you invested, but not when shorting. If the price rises, your losses rise as well. The stock price can theoretically grow endlessly, so you can also make endless losses. Nonetheless, if you have a hundred experts working for you, this method is a goldmine. Number 4. Forex. What does it do? 